And there are 2.2 million apps on the App Store, but really, you only need to know about five of them. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. As I've already mentioned, my name is David Tomich. I'm a Masters of Architecture graduate. And on this channel, we talk about technology and architecture, predominantly for architects and architecture students. Today, we're talking about the five apps that you need on your iPad or any tablet that you're using to be able to do your job effectively. Now, in by no way, shape or form are any of these apps, one, sponsored or two, generic. Every single app is highly purposeful and targeted at your job. You may not realize it, especially if you're not in the profession yet, but you will use all of these apps almost every single day. So app one, Morfolio Trace. If you don't know what Morfolio Trace is, it is a very targeted app at the architecture profession. It allows you to draw, document, and just trace freely like you were with normal butter paper. So you have the ability to start sketching out your floor plans, your sections, your elevations, whatever it might be, overlay a piece of butter paper, make some adjustments, overlay another piece of butter paper, make some more adjustments, maybe you don't like that one, turn that layer off, put another layer on and just keep going. Really get your flow and understanding of the concept design out very well. Now, Morfolio Trace has a lot more capabilities than that. But personally speaking, that is the extent of what I use it for. It gives you the ability to even take in some PDFs of the job that's been documented, overlay a piece of butter paper, you can change it from yellow, light yellow to white or transparent, whatever color you want, and then start marking up your changes. So if you're sitting in a client meeting, for example, and you need to document the changes that the client's talking about, you're going through the drawings page by page, you can quickly start tracing over that document without ruining the PDF. It is basically the high-tech version of tracing paper. That's the best way I can put it, but it is a very versatile app that you at least need to try out. It does have a free version. There is a paid version as well. If you start using it more and more, you'll probably end up getting the paid version just because I think it's like 12 bucks a year or something. It's not very expensive and it gives you a lot more freedom to import more data as you need it. Number two, OneDrive. OneDrive is not an architect or architecture student specific app, but seriously, if you do not have a cloud system, jump onto OneDrive. I recommend this one because I use Office 365 so much, Word, Excel, all those things, and it integrates really, really well. By having OneDrive, you have the ability to bring up any drawing, any photo, any document, anywhere in the world and share it with anybody. So the limitations of sending over 10 megabytes via email are gone. The limitations of calling up the office and going, ah, oh, I've forgotten this drawing, can you email it to me? Or can you bring somebody with the printed documentation are gone. You now have the ability to quickly and easily access any single file ever produced in your office. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that makes my job so much easier. We transitioned from a server-based system a couple years ago to the cloud, and man, I don't know why we didn't do it sooner, but the cloud system is phenomenal. App number three, Microsoft Teams. COVID's really changed how we do practice and how the world operates in general. No longer are we isolated and stuck inside our cubicles for hours on end, never speaking to anybody and we're no longer having face-to-face -face meetings as regularly. It is now a lot more common to have a video conference with a whole bunch of people at any time of the day or night. People have become a lot more accepting of it and now also just learnt to use the programs. Microsoft Teams, again, is something that I recommend because it falls into that Microsoft suite, so it just integrates with my workflow very well. You can use anything from Zoom to Skype to WebEx, whatever, I actually do have a video comparing them if you wanna check it out. But it is a very important app to have on your iPad in 2020. Number four, Microsoft To Do. Again, another Microsoft app because I use the Microsoft platform. It can be any to-do list you can think of, but having a to-do list is essential. You're gonna get bombarded with so many requests, so many emails, so many tasks to do, Clients are gonna give you information. 
you just you're just gonna forget realistically you need to be able to organize and manage your information very well so having 100 emails come in a day reading through them all and going okay i need to do this 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 and this i'm not going to do that now i'm going to put on my to-do list and get to it but continue doing my job makes it so much easier that when you do transition to that job you just look at the to-do list go through it one by one by one and just get it done you don't have to sit there going through hundreds of emails thinking back to all the meetings you've had and just trying to remember all this information you have it all compacted and concise now personally i am a little bit biased here because i use a to-do list in my everyday life i use it for everything it reminds me to buy things at the shops to do things when i get home to reply to people that i haven't spoken to in months and to run all my businesses at the same time as working a full-time job there is many things that you remember but there is many things you forget so having it all written down and that information available anywhere because it's on the app it's on the cloud it can be accessed anywhere around the world it is very very important that you learn to start using these to-do lists and finally the fifth app i recommend is notes now i use apple notes for a number of reasons predominantly for the fact of its versatility and freedom to do whatever you want it also gives you the freedom to file and document and order all of your jobs based on that job number so if you have 100 meetings with one client, you can store that all under the one client folder, and then you can have all different notes for a different client or a different project. I've tried to use a whole bunch of different notes apps and trying to slowly convert everybody in the office to a digital form of note taking. And so far, notes is the best form for the architecture profession, simply for the fact that it allows you to be creatively free. If you have to just scribble down some notes and take minutes, you can do that. If you have to type some notes, you can do that. If you have to sketch out a floor plan, mark up some details, or showcase an image to the client, you can do that. If you need to put up your iPad, take a photo of something on site, draw all over it, file it in that note section, you can again do that. And it's all stored to the cloud, so it's automatically filed. I go on about filing and documenting so much because it is a very big part of your job, as well as obviously designing and documenting buildings. This is one element of your job and it's the best part of your job. But in reality, there is so much communication, so much teamwork, so much collaboration, and so much information that needs to be retained and accessible at any given time to ensure that project is mastered. And when it's built, it's absolutely perfect. Now, I'll quickly show you guys what I have on my iPad as well. It's very minimalistic. I don't have a lot of apps because I generally just use my iPad for work purposes. Productivity is probably the best folder that I have for everything that I use. Uh, Word, Excel, Adobe, Skype, things like that. Photoshop, Lightroom, they get used on a very regular day-to-day -day basis. A Power Mirror, if you're wondering, is actually used for these YouTube videos so I can mirror the device that I'm recording on onto the iPad so I can kind of understand what's going on, make sure things are in focus. Usually at the bottom of the dock, I'll have Google Chrome, I'll have Outlook, I'll have Notes, and I'll have my to-do list. I'll occasionally put a third-party app down there if I need to use split screen, but those four are generally what is down there in my dock and used every single day, non-stop. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like button to help the video with the YouTube algorithm. Believe it or not, it really, really helps the channel grow and get exposed to more people. So the more people that watch, the more people will hopefully hit that like button. If you wanna see more of my content, hit that subscribe button and you'll get a new video from me every single Monday. This week I've tried to produce three pieces of content. Hopefully this is the third and final piece you've seen. If not, well, I didn't achieve my goal. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.